that this is the day that the Lord has made. So we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Even though it's a cloudy day here today, we're hopeful that there'll be more sunshine like there was yesterday and that we can gather together online and that we can be each other's comfort and presence during these trying times in our world today. So let's get started today knowing that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's sing along with the band. Setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good, it's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is a day. Today is a day. I'm putting my fears aside. I'm leaving my doubts behind. I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you. Jesus, I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good, it's good, today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it, today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be and I won't worry about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day Today is the day And I will stand upon your truth I will stand upon your truth And all my days I'll live for you All my days and I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Worry about tomorrow. I'm giving you my fears and sorrows. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we are so glad that you are here to celebrate, to pray, to praise, and to come together in this way as we celebrate this day um, and celebrate Epiphany too. As we approach this week, it's been a tumultuous and chaotic week at best. And so perhaps we need a little time to, to calm down our souls and to calm us down as we come into this time of worship. So let's take a moment and close your eyes if you wish and continue to breathe in and breathe out. To breathe in the spirit of God, the Ruach. And breathe out all the tension 
all the anxiety, all the perhaps anger that is there. Come in this time before God and acknowledge the things that have not gone well. Acknowledge the things that you need forgiveness for. Actions done or undone, words said or not spoken, opinions held or opinions offered. And ask God's forgiveness. Breathe in and breathe out and relax knowing that God's presence here is in and through and among all of us. And that God never tires of having us turn again and never tires of offering us forgiveness. Open your eyes and come back to this space. And know that amidst the chaos of the world, that God stands firm and resolved to lead and guide all of God's people throughout the globe. And especially here, as we experience all of the things that come into our lives. So let's sing along with the band knowing that God's presence is here, alive and well within us, and that it is well with my soul. I invite you to join me in prayer.
almighty and ever-living God, you reveal your Son to us with a brilliant, shining star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all the lands. Accept our lives as the treasure that we offer and bring to lay at your feet. Accept our service as our payment for the service that you offer to us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Snuggle in now and hear the reading for this day. The reading for the celebration of Epiphany comes from the 60th chapter of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for this day comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the peoples, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them they went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage, and opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, we made the decision today, we had some options, and 
to celebrate Epiphany, which occurred actually on Wednesday, or to continue and do what was assigned for the next Sunday, which would have been the baptism of our Lord. And baptism would seem easy, too. Uh, we had made the decision, because we've kind of had some fun over this last 12 days of Christmas and over the Christmas season and the Advent season with our three kings in this congregation, them traveling around, and so we wanted to make sure that we celebrated their arrival with all fullness. I would much rather be baptizing a baby and splashing warm water on someone's head or lifting up a chalice in consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ today. But we were set to celebrate Epiphany, and so it is. In the church, we know Epiphany as January 6th. The celebration or manifestation of the light of the world that has come. It follows the 12th day of Christmas, and we tell of the wise men that have come bearing gifts for the Christ child. In Ireland, it's also known as Women's Christmas. And they celebrate this day with a day off for the women who have been so busy during the Christmas season and celebrate also the wise women who have come bearing more practical gifts. Food for the family, a blanket to wrap the baby in, and gifts to help clean and organize. So today, or the time of Epiphany, we often talk about the gifts given, following the star, and settling into a new year. But this year, we experienced a very different Epiphany. Not wise people following a star, but homegrown terrorists leading an insurrection at our nation's capital. Not generous seekers bringing valuable gifts, but self-centered rioters leaving behind chaos and destruction. I know, and I have heard your desire to have the church, this church, be a place of retreat from the chaos of the world. And this is no place for partisan politics. But the gospel itself is political, not partisan, but political. Jesus was born into a world of deep division and his ministry actively addressed injustice, inclusion, unfairness, and the divisions of his day and of ours. A faith that only makes us feel good and never challenges us to be better, to do better, to move from where we are to where God is leading us, is a shallow and self-centered faith and not true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot remain on the surface of Christianity just so as not to give offense. Shallow platitudes and pick and choose proof texting only lead to what we witnessed this week. Too many have been quiet too long under the banner of Christian love, which ironically has led to that which is neither Christian nor loving. There's much talk right now about protecting our Constitution, and that will primarily be led by our representatives in government. But a deeper wound has been uncovered. We are wounded and divided as people. The fabric of trust, the trust between us, that has allowed us to have different opinions, viewpoints, 
and perspectives. The fabric of trust that allows us to listen to each other and still talk and work together for the common good and as friends has been torn. We seem to have forgotten about how much we have in common. How large the umbrella is over us all that we gather under. We seem to have forgotten to listen and sometimes even to care. There is no doubt in my mind that this isolationism has been enhanced by our current pandemic. The need to be socially distant, to quarantine, to stay apart, has all added. We drive through for our morning coffee because it's too dangerous to chat over a table. Family gatherings are discouraged lest they become events that lead to hospitals. We shrink back from someone even extending their hand to shake hands, thinking to ourselves and drawing back, what are they thinking? The mending of this trust, the mending of our social fabric, is the job of the church now. Government can help or hinder, but it is the work of the people. The work of the people, the liturgia of the church, the liturgy, which literally means the work of the people. And while we develop new ways, liturgies, new ways of being in this time and moving into a changed world, we will have to continue to listen and rebuild trust. The work of not only Christmas, but Christians and of people of faith everywhere is to feed the hungry to welcome the stranger, to clothe the naked, to visit the lonely, to heal the sick, to tell the good news, to bring our best and most valuable gifts and offer them at the manger and then return home by another way. That other way where the glory of God rises upon us and calls us to the light. This is hard work. It's difficult work. And work that we must do together and alone. Our tendency will be to push through this quickly and in the name of healing of the nations to push it away. And that is what we very must not do. I preach a lot about grace, forgiveness, and love. They're the hallmarks of faith for me. And they are the hallmarks of our faith together. But they are also costly and sometimes painful. Grace is costly. We cannot continue doing what we have done before, perpetuating old patterns and then claiming God's grace for us is there without recognizing that God's grace is there for the other also. We cannot continue old behaviors because they suit us and relying upon God's grace to bail us out. That's cheap grace. And it is not God's. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is not automatic. Yes, we can quote scripture that proves that God is always there to forgive and removes our sin as far away as the east is from the west. 
But forgiveness comes with a requirement of repentance, a turning from the old ways that have led us there into something new, to a new life that's changed. Will we fail? Of course we will. No one's perfect. We will fail again and again. But we do have to try. And with God's grace and forgiveness, we pick ourselves up, turn around again, and continue on in a new way. A new way towards home. And love. The love of God knows no bounds. It's never ending and there for us always. But we need to remember that God's love comes with the command to also love our neighbor. And perhaps we've forgotten those first chapters of Genesis in the creation story where we were created in God's image. Not just you, not just me, but every person carries the image of God. And so how we love and treat each other is a reflection of how we treat God. It's not easy to love your neighbor. But it is a command. And we do have to try. These epiphany lessons come to remind us that those who were wise came bearing their most precious gifts. And then they returned home by another way, changing their route because of what they had seen and heard and the journey that they had been on. Today, we have an opportunity to make decisions. We make decisions each day. But it seems like a very momentous time in our country's history. And as people of faith, we need to make decisions. What are the most precious gifts that you can bring to lay at the feet of Christ? What are the things you need to discard to make the journey that we are all on a little bit easier? Can we leave behind selfishness? Can we leave behind our own desires for the journey to the one who fulfills everything? And will you go home by another way? Or will you continue on in the way that you have, thinking that nothing has changed and just hoping that others will take care of this? and all will eventually be fine. My friends, the work of the church is the work to mend this fabric which has torn. You can choose not to, or you can choose to deepen your faith and to go on the journey along with everyone else to build a new kingdom to build the trust, the love, to rely on the grace and the forgiveness of God, but to work for them, to love your neighbor as yourself, and to look first to the needs of community rather than self. Near the beginning of this pandemic situation that we are in, we had some yard signs made that together we can get through this. It still applies. 
whatever the world may throw at us, together as people of faith, we can get through this. But it will take all of us working very hard together to mend what has been torn, to love what has been hated, to continue to forgive those who seem unforgivable when they turn and repent, to rely on God's grace, but not cheapen it. We are here together, my friends. May we continue to build the kingdom in Christ's name, not our own. Amen. Yeah. 
I invite you to lift your hearts and your voices in prayer as we pray for those known to us and for those known to God. Glorious God, we ask that you fill your church with your presence. Let our lives be beacons of your redemption. Give us wisdom and courage that we may speak with boldness and confidence even when our words are met with scorn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring all nations and rulers to the splendor of your dawn. Raise up advocates who champion the cause of vulnerable people. Inspire leaders to be generous with abundance, that all people may live in stability and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, support, and restoration. Guide and direct those representatives for our government who live through a time of terror. Drive away fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships and mend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send traveling mercies upon all who journey home by other ways. Guard refugees, immigrants, asylum seekers. Protect families who flee conflict in their homes or homelands. Tend to those who have no place to lay their heads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to the riches of Christ, Draw all your saints from the least to the greatest to your heavenly places. Console those who mourn. And as you created all things, make all things new again in the splendor of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, come quickly to those with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. If you're rich or poor, strong you know love is what we're after we're all broken but we're all in this together 
I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks for your presence here today and hope that in the days and weeks to come, you will do all that you can to help continue to repair the broken fabric of our congregation and our community and our world today. As we look for ways to mend, let us reach out to one another, listening, caring, and continuing to be the people of God leaving our gifts at the feet of Christ and going home by another way. And now um, we want to remind you that all the things are continuing, Bible studies are continuing, and please take note of the um, update as that comes to you each week. If you have not gotten a star word yet, you can do that through the generator and now receive God's blessing as we come to the end of this time of worship. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, continue as we sing our way out to sing along with the band on this one last song. Oh, word of the day, I'm reminded. The word of the day is epiphany. Epiphany. If you don't spell it right, you don't get credit, so look it up. Your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your peace. Remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. song of your salvation and all your people sing along so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace is enough your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. So remember your people, remember. Your children, remember your promise.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So we 